Hi, uh, today I'm going to show you how you can store meeting transcripts on SharePoint. So um, let's start off. So first of all, to set the scene, um, in Teams meetings, it's possible to um, generate automatic recordings and transcripts. As you can see in here, I have this meeting with a transcript already available. Typically what you would have to do after this meeting has ended is to go to this recordings and transcripts tab and then manually download this transcript. As you can see, this is a meeting between me and Jane Doe and yeah, we've talked with each other and some of this text could be interesting for us, um, but yeah, we want to download this. So um, instead of doing this manually in this video, I'm going to show you how you can automate this with a Power Automate flow. So the aim for today is to extract that Word document and put it into a SharePoint library. As you can see in here, this is just a regular library uh, with a couple of demo content Word documents. Um, and these documents would look like this. So as you can see, yeah, the output is pretty much the same as what you can see in the Microsoft Teams interface. So that's our aim for today. So let's have a look at uh, the Power Automate Flow setup. Um, so this is the whole design of the flow. Um, as you can see, it has five main steps. Um, and then after that, the last step is condition. And within, within that condition, we're checking a lot of things. So let me zoom in, zoom out a bit so you can see this total flow. So this is the total flow. Um, as you can see, it's using three HTTP actions. Um, those are premium, so be aware before you start the setup that you have actually have a license to set this up. Um, and it, it uses a SharePoint connector and a user profile or a Ute Office 365 users connector and obviously the the Outlook of uh, Outlook Office 365 connector. So that's on a high level the design. So let me guide you through the uh, flow step by step. Um, so first of all, we have this trigger. Uh, when an upcoming event is starting soon, I'm just using uh, my own calendar. Uh, so that's step number one. Step number two is getting my own profile. Um, that could be useful um, to collect your own mail and those kind of details. Uh, and also obviously to hide my, my own personal email in the flow and in this video. So it's even for that, it's useful. Um, then I have a couple of initialized variable actions. That's to handle um, the data which we're getting from certain HTTP uh, actions output. So one is online meeting ID. And the second one is a transcript ID. So again, just initializing, uh, nothing in there yet. And then um, after that, we have a condition action. So this is the first really interesting one. Um, as you can see in here, um, we have an expression which checks with an index of function if a certain string value is within the body of the body. So the body body is the nested body within the response of this when an upcoming event is starting soon output. So what we're actually looking for, and just to go back to our meeting details, is we're actually looking for this hyperlink. If this hyperlink is available, then we can safely assume that this is a Teams meeting because you can imagine that within this, when an upcoming event is starting soon trigger, uh, it would, would also be triggered by standard meetings. So meetings which aren't Teams meetings. So we need to check for that to make sure we're not triggering or we're not using um, every single meeting within this flow. So that's why we're using this index of function. And this index of function is searching for this hyperlink. And uh, if it's um, 
equals minus one, it means it hasn't found it. So that's why it compares it with the minus one. And um, if that's true, we will output zero. So that means it's absent. So it's not there. So it's not a Teams meeting. Um, if it equals one, it means it has found that hyperlink. So it means it is a Teams meeting. So that's why you see this expression, which you can, by the way, add via this expression tab is equal to minus one. So what's in the notes in here, I copy pasted that here in the expression tab. So that's our condition. So that's the first thing we're doing. We're checking if it's actually a Teams meeting or not. So that's important. So if it is, then the next step would be to get details of that meeting. So um, one of the things which you can do is um, if you don't know the online meeting ID, you can actually retrieve it by using uh, the join web URL. So again, that hyperlink is pretty important. So if you have that, you can use this graph API call of listing all online meetings of yourself and filter or use a filter query parameter on, on the join web URL attribute and look for that specific hyperlink from the body. So that's this first HTTP request. We're trying to retrieve uh, our online meeting ID. So the next step would be um, if it has found it, um, it would be um, set in this variable. So that's where this expression comes into play. So this is actually just the body of the HTTP and the value of the HTTP, and that's an array. So it potentially could return um, multiple items, but yeah, that would be very unlikely. Uh, so that's why we always say get our first item of that array and then return the ID of it because that's the only thing we're interested in. So that's what this set variable action does. And then, yeah, obviously that's that got me thinking like, yeah, are transcripts directly available? Uh, like with recording, sometimes the system ne needs some time to process it. So um, what I've done is I made an estimate. So you obviously feel free to play around with this setting. But at the moment, I'm, um, I'm waiting until 30 minutes after the meet meeting should have have finished. So uh, after the schedule end of the meeting, um, in my case, it's obviously in the testing that worked, but obviously play around with this setting because a meeting can overrun. So this might not be sufficient. Maybe you want to turn this into an hour. Um, but yeah, um, that's why I'm using this. Um, so it's using the add minutes function. So again, this is an expression. Um, and it's using the end field of the trigger and just adds 30 minutes to it and then uh, formats it into um, a format date time, which is consumable by this delay. So yeah, it will wait because with this action. So when it has done the work, uh, when it's completed the delay, then it would um, use the next HTTP action, which is um, again, a graph API call. Uh, and to be clear, I didn't specify that in my first HTTP, but these graph API calls do need um, an app in Azure Active Directory. So you need to register that with the correct permissioning for these methods. So this is a list transcript method. So you, that, uh, that app do, does need to create API permissions on the graph API to be able to. So be aware of that as well. So that's all set up in here. So in here, I selected Active Directory OAuth, the authority, my tenant, which is a parameter in this case, um, the audience, which is graph, a client ID, which is the client ID of that application and Azure Active Directory, a secret, and then obviously the secret itself, which again, in my case is a parameter, but every single of these HTTP actions has that kind of set up in the authentication. So be aware of that. Um, so sorry, a bit of a defer of what I was talking about. But um, in this HTTP, yeah, we're using the list 
transcript method. Um, and as you can see, it's built up from um, our ID. So um, it's a beta, um, beta graph API uh, method, by the way. Um, it's using online meetings and then obviously the online meeting variable we retrieved earlier and then it's just listing transcripts with a get method. So that's it. So this should return one or more transcripts because it, it is possible to uh, restart the meeting and then restart the transcription. But I hopefully safely assumed that most of the meetings would only run once and would only have one transcript. Um, so that's why in this set variable, I'm using a body HTTP again. Uh, be aware that obviously you need to have the correct name of the action in here. So it's called HTTP list transcript. So that should re be reflected in this expression. And then, then again, the first item uh, of the array, of the value array. And then again, we're interested in the ID. So in this case, that would be the transcript ID. So that's how we are retrieving what uh, our ID of our transcript we're interested in. And then the last method is um, the get uh, call transcript method. And within this, you can, uh, what we're doing is we're not only using that transcript ID, but we're also retrieving the content part of it. So that's where you, yeah, you can see in here, it's a forward slash content. So we're specifically getting that property of the uh, individual contra transcript. And then what I've also done is I've used a format uh, query parameter or format specifier. And you have two options, uh, text VTT, which are, yeah, uh, like subtitles, like it's just like a subtitle caption uh, format, which is just like a regular text file. Or you can specify to have it in a Word document format. And in this case, that's what we want. So that's why I specified uh, this format. Um, so that's retrieving that specific transcript. And then obviously as a last action, I want to store it on SharePoint. So that's the create file. So in this case, I specified a site address, which is my site collection, which I just showed you in the intro. And then I, in here I have the folder path. So again, what you just saw in the intro and then um, the file name, which is, yeah, you want to give it a unique file name. So in this case, it's transcript hyphen. And then again, I used a, a simple expression, which is UTC now. And I'm, I'm using, um, this is a typo by the way, um, year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, which should make it pretty unique because of the seconds part in combination with the rest of it, obviously. And then um, in the file content, yeah, just use the body because that's the actual uh, encoded content. So yeah, should be good to go with that. So yeah, that's, Sorry. So that's in a nutshell um, the flow. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and obviously subscribe to my YouTube channel or feel free to follow me on Twitter. Thanks. Bye.